How's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm starting a new project. At this new house, we're gonna be installing a three zone ductless mini split. And uh, I'm actually here on a Sunday because I've been out for a week sick and you can probably hear it in my voice. Um, and the drywall guys are gonna be here tomorrow. So I wanna make sure I get all my piping and wiring and drain lines ran that's gonna be behind the sheetrock so that way we don't have any problems. Let's do some work. This video is brought to you by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. And by RLS, original, patented, proven. All right, so I'm gonna give you a quick little rundown on how everything's gonna be set up. We'll check out the inside first. So this particular project, they spray foamed all of the walls and the roof. So very, very well insulated. This is the largest room here. So we're gonna be putting up a, a high wall right there. So on this particular one, that's gonna be attic space all up there, so right above that top plate right there. So I'm gonna be mounting the indoor unit slightly above that so the piping and the wiring can go directly into the attic. So I don't have to worry about running anything for this one as far as sheetrock goes. So, and that'll take care of this main room here. And then we have a high wall that goes into this room, which we're gonna be putting right about there. So this is one that I'm gonna to have to uh, go ahead and run my piping and everything because they will be putting sheetrock there and I wanna make sure I have everything ran and sealed up properly. And then I believe there's one more over here. This, is, this house is a very open concept. So these three units will work together very nicely. And then we'll have the uh, third one right here. So same concept, um, get everything ran. And there's a chase right, right there that's gonna go from the basement all the way up to the attic. So I just basically wanna run my piping from these locations over to the, uh, the top of that chase. And then there's, a, there's an attic pull down there so I can get access to everything after. So today is not gonna be a ton of work, but it's just getting prepped so we are um, not in the way of the sheetrock guys. But I've got some special, um, they're called rough-in boxes, and they're designed to go in the two by four ca uh, cavity wall. And I'll get those and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But um, this will be the first time I'm using those and I think they're gonna work out pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you where the condenser is gonna be. So this, this particular project is out in here in uh, Normandy, Tennessee. It's about an hour from, uh, from where I'm at, Murfreesboro. But it's beautiful out here, it's nice and quiet. But anyway, so this is all basement. And um, if I remember correctly, we'll be coming down into the basement right around this area. So we'll be making our penetration somewhere right in here and then we'll just come down the wall come all the way across and the condenser i'm going to mount do a wall mount condenser somewhere right in here just get away from that intake and the exhaust um, so it'll be somewhere right in here so i'll be running a six inch line hide speedy channel line hide um, down and all the way across so that way everything looks really nice all right, so on this particular unit that we're gonna be going with, um, it's a Mitsubishi three zone system, but it does not utilize that branch box. That's one I tried to get, but they didn't have any in stock because I would love to have been able to run one line set all the way up into the attic and then put the, the branch box there and then tie off to all three systems. Um, that's just a much cleaner install, less piping to run. But in this day and age, not everything is available. So we had to go with a different one and this particular one, we have to run single line sets from every uh, indoor unit all the way out. So that's why I'm gonna make sure that I uh, install six inch line hide to be able to cover all that. Um, and then also with the drain line, since we're running three zones, um, I wanna run one drain line coming down, not three. So I'm gonna run that in a one inch PVC up into the attic and then um, one of them will be a gravity drain, which is that, gonna be that, that larger room. And then those two small rooms, 
uh, we're gonna have to use a pump because you know obviously they're down low and we gotta run the piping up. So we're gonna end up mounting one of those surface mount um, pumps that goes right below the indoor unit. So as of today, we just gotta run some quarter inch tubing down in there. But um, anyhow, that's kind of a, the gist of how it's all gonna be installed. Um, they've already got, I didn't do any of this work. They've already got the exhaust. Um, and those look really sweet. Those uh, exhaust terminations there, those stainless steel. And then the disconnects already ran, so we're good there. I just need to get some rough end boxes installed, get a little bit of piping ran, and then uh, we should be good to go. But I wanna show you those rough end boxes now. All right, so these are the rough end boxes that I was talking about. Um, so they're all plastic construction. And again, they're designed to fit in a two by four wall. And um, basically these things extend out to where you can um, secure them to each two by four. And um, you basically cut out this right here. And then you also knock this out or this out, depending on these, these, whichever works for you, uh, for your application. But basically this gives you an, uh, the option to run all of your piping and wiring, drain line, whatever it is that you need to bring into the box. And then you'll mount your indoor unit to where the, the piping part of it, the lower section of that indoor unit is gonna be covering this area. So once you remove this front area, you've got all of this cavity to uh, connect your copper lines, connect your drain line, whatever it is. Um, instead of typically on a high wall, you have very minimal room back behind there once your, your line sets are connected. So that makes it super difficult. So with this, you just got a lot more room to play with. And then secondly, when you're dealing with a new construction uh, situation, you can have all your piping run into here and it's secured so that sheetrock guys can't just go in there and bend your copper and, and mess it all up. Because typically you would just have it kind of stubbed out and they would have to um, install the sheetrock around your piping, which not good. I've had so many situations where I come back after the, the sheetrock was done and the, um, my, you know, my pipes are all kinked up. So this should eliminate that problem. So this is the first time that I'm going to be using this product. Um, it's called Rough In Box, and it's by uh, Polar Building Solutions. I'll put a link down in the description so you guys can go check one out. Um, I actually picked these up from my local M&A um, supply. So I don't know if you guys have M&A. That may only be local. I'm not sure, but um, I'm sure if you ask your supply houses for this particular box, if you want to try one out, you can. Um, they even may sell these on Amazon. If they do, I'll put a link down below. But uh, even, it comes with instructions and everything on how to actually install it. So anyway, they're very versatile. If you can see this little drip leg here, these are actually designed where you can run the drain line from the unit directly into here because it's plastic. And then you can run a dr hook your drain line from here and run it down through the floor or you know run it wherever you need to. Um, so... That's pretty neat. I don't think I'm going to be doing that again because I'm going to be utilizing the, the pumps, but uh, that is pretty cool that that is an option. All right, so this is going to be the location of where we're going to be putting the indoor unit. So first thing I wanted to do is on, on this box, it already comes pre-installed with four of those brackets just like that. So normally what you would want to do, if you're on a 16 um, inch center stud opening, you would take these out, you'd flip them over, and then that would give you basically, and these are adjustable too, so they can probably go a little bit wider than uh, 16 on center. And that gives you your mounting points to be able to secure it. But on this particular one, where I, I need to install it, it's not quite 16, but it fits in there, I'm talking perfectly snug. So all I have to do is open this up and I can just put my screws in from the side um, and that would secure it. That's pretty much good to go on this one. But before we do that, we need to get it prepped. And on this particular box, um, uh, well, not this, this box, but on all high wall units, the line sets run from the right hand side towards the left. 
So what they recommend, and which is smart, is to always come in on this left-hand side, if all possible. That way the line set comes naturally, comes in like this, and it'll tie in to the unit. If you came in here, you'd have to come this direction, swoop back around, and then make that connection. So obviously, if you had to do it that way, you know, you had to, but if you can come in on this left-hand side, that's gonna be the best way to do it. So we wanna get that prepped. Um, I'm gonna cut out and notch out this top side. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut my three sides on this front plate. You actually do not wanna cut the bottom. That's gonna act as a hinge. So that way it just hinges open. You can, uh, for me, I'm gonna be securing it on both sides, but that's how you would run your line sets in and all of your wiring and whatnot. And then you basically hinge it back closed um, and then they can do their sheetrock. So it's really cool. If you really check this box out, they have thought a lot of things through. So they have the thickness of the sheetrock already kind of uh, measured out for you. So right in here, that's where you're gonna be basically the framing goes to. So that way this sticks out past the framing and uh, it'll be flush with that sheetrock once they install it. So I'm really liking this so far. It seems like a really th um, well thought out box and uh, I think it's gonna work out pretty good. So what I'm doing now is cutting out this top lid for the, uh, the line sets. So um, this is only a quarter and three eighths. So I'm thinking this opening is going to be big enough and then, uh, and then we'll seal it up after. But you can open it all the way up if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. I would rather cut more if I need it. So that looks good to me. So that's ready to go and have already opened up the front. So it hinges out like that. So I think we're ready to get this box installed. All right, so I'm gonna mark 20 inches from the top, which is basically from the ceiling. That's gonna be the bottom of the box, which is basically the bottom of the unit. And that gives me about eight inches from the top of the unit to the actual ceiling. So that's what we want. So basically, just since we have that friction fit, just line up your, uh, your lines there and make sure you are flush with the markings on the side. So the sheetrock will be there. And I wanna go ahead and just make sure it's level as well, which it is, so that's good. Just get one in there for now. solid. There we go. That's all we need is just make it almost to the other side of the box, and that should be enough because the other one's going to come this far. So. Should be good there. 
just trying my best not to rip up this insulation, which turned out pretty good. Get my drain discharge tube in here. So that should be plenty to come down. That should be plenty of cable there to get all the way into the unit, no problem. All right, so here is the final product. I think it turned out really nice and I'm really happy with these boxes. So, looks really clean, got it sealed on the top and on the top plate up there, nail plates, everything's good to go. So just to speed up the project, I went ahead and finished up this other side. Basically is the same thing, so I didn't wanna repeat the work for you. But this one turned out nice as well. Go straight up. And I made sure that I supported it coming out of the wall there. So that way it can't kink on that top plate. And then of course we supported it going all the way down before it comes. It'll eventually go down this chase here, but for now it's just up in the attic. So. Yeah, this one turned out real nice. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for what I need to do today. It is ready for the sheetrock guys. So once they finish what they're doing, I'll come back out, finish running the line sets, um, set the equipment and just go on from there. But that's gonna complete today's video. I really hope you got something out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, see you guys later.